All right, so we're going to do assignment 26, and we're going to do problem 24. So luckily there's a picture there. The picture isn't that, um, so let's read it. It says a 25 kilogram mass. So I'm, as always, I'm going to write my given and find because that helps me to solve the problem. So it says a 25 kilogram mass, so the mass is 25. Starts from rest, so that means the initial velocity is zero. On a rough 30 degree incline. So it's telling you it's rough because there's going to be friction, and then it says the coefficient of friction is equal to 0.1, and the mass slides 8.4 meters along the incline. So let's draw a picture. So here's my mass, and the mass is going to slide, this is 30 degrees, down this incline, and then this X, that's how far it's going. So question number one says, determine the work done by gravity. So we want to find the work. So we know work is equal to force times displacement. Now remember that the work done by gravity is I want to find the work from here to here. So the work, if there was no friction, the work from here to here is the same from the work from here to here because it has to do with the vertical displacement. So work is equal to the weight, which is equal to mg, times this vertical displacement here, which I'm going to call d. Now, even though this is 8.4, the weight acts vertically. The weight acts down, so the vertical displacement, I'm going to have to look at this and do a little geometry. And I look at this and I see that this d is opposite the 30 degree angle, and I have the hypotenuse, therefore w is equal to mg times x sine of theta. So this d, and I forgot to write the d here, this d is x sine of theta. So now I substituted my values, so it's equal to 25 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 8.4 meters, that was x, times the sine of 30 degrees. And when I put all that in my calculator, I get 1,029 joules. Because a, a kilogram meter per second squared is a newton, and a newton times a meter is a joule. All right, so now it says part B, find the work done by friction. So remember, work is equal to FD, so the work done by friction is going to be the frictional force times the displacement of that frictional force. So now, if again, if I look at my situation, and here's my block, Let's look at all the forces acting on it. So I know the force of weight acts down. The normal force acts perpendicular to the surfaces in contact. And my frictional force is going to act opposite the direction of motion. So the block is moving this way down the incline, and the frictional force acts opposite the direction of motion. So you really have to do your free body diagram. And you have to remember that friction acts opposite the direction of motion. Okay? Now, I want to find the work done by friction. Do I know this frictional force? No, but I know that frictional force is equal to mu times f of n. Because mu is f of f over f of n. Now, I don't know what f of n is. So I can't just look at this. Remember, I'm going to take my normal, I'm going to take my weight and 
the frictional force acts parallel to the surfaces in contact, so I'm going to take my weight and break it up into its components. So remember, the components would be head to tail. So when I redraw my free body diagram of the box, I have Fn. My frictional force goes opposite the direction of motion, and instead of the weight, I'm going to replace F of G with FGX and FGY. And when I look at this, I see FGX is opposite, so FGX is going to be MG sine of theta, and FGY, which is right here, is adjacent to the given angle, so FGY is going to be MG cosine of theta. So now, this f of f is mu times f of n, which is equal to mu, and if I sum forces here vertically. Now the thing is, on an FRQ, you can look at your free body diagram, and we, weren't, we didn't have to draw free body diagrams, but we do them to solve the problem. We do them because when you write stuff on paper, it's easier to see. So if I was to sum forces vertically here, I would say summation of f of y is ma, which is zero, and when I look at the forces here, I see fn minus fgy is zero, so fn is equal to fgy, which is mg cosine theta. So now instead of f of n, I'm going to write mg cosine of theta, and all of that is times d. And the D is the direction in which the frictional force is displaced. So that's along the incline. So now when I substitute in my values, I have 0 0.1 times 25 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30 degrees times the 8.4 meters. Now, the frictional force is actually what? Going in the opposite direction, so this work is the work done by friction, which is negative. Why is this important? Because if I was doing conservation of energy, now before we did friction, we said the total energy here was equal to the total energy here, but the total energy here minus the work done by friction is going to be equal to the energy here, okay? Now in part C, it says, determine the change in the kinetic energy. So when an object loses height, it gains speed. That's conservation of energy. The work of gravity is the energy change due to the change in height. This is the amount of potential energy that disappears. Remember, the potential energy is the work of gravity. Okay? So now if I want to find delta K, Delta K is actually, we're doing actually C and D two different ways. So this is the work done by gravity minus the work done by friction. Now, usually on FRQs, whatever answer you use for part A, you use for part B, for part B, for part C, and stuff like that. So this is going to be 1,029 minus 1,000 minus this answer. So the change in the kinetic energy is going to be 851 joules. But part D, when it says determine the network, we're going to see that this is actually the network. This is the way that I would normally do the problem. Okay, I would say work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Um, what I would do is I would, again, to do part D, I would say... Um, I would again look at my diagram and say, okay, the net work is equal to the net force times that displacement, okay? And again, when we look at our free body diagram, and I'm just going to go what's moving along the plane, this is my frictional force, and then I had FGX. So when I summed forces down the plane, and I say summation of F net is equal to MA, these net force is really what? FGX minus F of F. So if I want to find the net work, the net work is equal to the net force times that displacement. 
So what I'm just going to show you is the work kinetic energy theorem says that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So what I normally do is I would find the net work, and then if they wanted me to find the change in kinetic energy, I would just do it that way. But there's more than one way to do it. So now when we do this, we see that the net work is equal to the net force, which is Fgx minus F of F, times that vertical displacement. So my net work is equal to FGX, which I already found up here somewhere, which is mg sine of theta minus F of F, which I found up here. Remember, this was F of F, all this. That was F of F. Minus F of F, which is mu m g cosine of theta all times d. I could probably pull out the g, little g too, but we'll just go ahead and substitute in our values. So the net work is equal to 25 times 9.8 times sine of 30 minus 0.1, I'm going to write that below, 0.1 times 25 times 9.8 times cosine of 30, and then all of that is times 8.4 meters. Okay. Now, sometimes you're going to have to do that all in terms of variables, so that's why it's good to get to this point, and then that, when you do it on your calculator, it comes out to be the same thing, 851 joules. So this is just showing you that when you do the work energy theorem, you know that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy, okay? So again, you can say FD is equal to KF minus K naught, but this is all the work energy theorem.